the great Northwoods to the Rockbound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Hello everyone, today on Good Morning Maine, witnesses are saying they heard an explosion in Bangor as a residential building caught fire last night. Plus, you can now request an absentee ballot for the 2024 election. And we'll also have an exclusive interview with House Speaker Mike Johnson as he sets up Battle Station here in Maine to try and get Republicans elected up and down the ballot. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us this morning. We'll have those stories coming up, but let's tell them about a little breaking news first. They, apparently a tractor trailer truck hauling one of those giant windmills has overturned on Route 1 in Stockton Springs and uh, has caused quite some problems there. According to the latest reports, the roadway is still closed there. They've set up some detours around the area. So if you're heading through that area on Route 1, you may want to avoid the area today. People heading from like Bucksport to Belfast will right. have to take quite a mighty detour. Um, but Route 1 is closed at this point. There were some initial reports of injuries. We don't have a lot of information at this point, but we will certainly bring more, bring more information to you when we get it. Yeah, it could be a lengthy detour. Yeah. All right, now let's switch gears and send it over to Devin Biggs for that rainy forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Friday. We're waking up to a little bit of areas of dense fog this morning across the western parts of the state and in some other spots as well. Of course, as we get the daytime rolling, we'll lose the fog. And of course, the concern will be some rain that will be developing today on top of some rumbles of thunder. There is also a small crowd advisory that is now posted until 8 a.m. Sunday for this small area here. We might see this expanded a little bit more as, of course, we watch for Debbie that will be moving in rather soon. And we're already seeing the rain moving in as a result of Debbie here tracking from the southwest to the north and east. Not much of any lightning with this just yet, but we will be watching for more lightning that will be on the way coming up later on today as you get more of that peak daytime heating. But here's the leftovers of or Debbie right here. Pretty much a tropical depression, if not a remnant low at this point as it tracks off towards the north, sending in a lot of moisture, some showers and storms, and we'll keep this going throughout the daytime period today. But we will also get some breaks from time to time. Here's future cast. We'll get some breaks going throughout the afternoon period, but more opportunities for showers Showers and storms arrive overnight tonight in the parts of early Saturday morning with locally heavy downpours possible too. Now here's the wind roughly at around 5 to 10 miles per hour to start today, but tonight and also in the parts of tomorrow, the winds really become gusty, so make sure you're ready for that. Your forecast for today, some scattered showers and thunderstorms possible with highs in the low 70s and that southeast wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, watching out for showers and thunderstorms with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. You'll full five day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. We'll get another look at that forecast a little later on. Well, a structure fire occurred last night in Bangor after witnesses report they heard what sounded like an explosion. Holden, Brewer, Bangor and Orno Fire Departments responded to a residential building at 59 Kenduskeg Avenue at about 910 last night. Witnesses at the scene say that a loud noise, which sounded like an explosion, was heard around the time the fire broke out. According to social media posts, everyone made it out safely and firefighters also managed to rescue two cats. Officials have not yet confirmed any details and we will provide more information when it becomes available. Well, the director of Lampson's Funeral Homes made his first court appearance on Thursday after being accused of stealing from his clients. Harold Chip Lampson is charged with four counts of theft. He's accused of stealing money from funeral trust funds through his businesses in Lincoln and Millinocket. During a main Board of Funeral Services hearing back in May, Lampson admitted to the allegations that included more than 60 violations and also agreed to surrender his license. Lampson is due back in court on November 6th. The Old Town Police Department has canceled the silver alert for a missing man. That after the man was located safely. 87-year-old Wayne Dion was last seen at his home on 7th Street on Wednesday morning. He left to go to an appointment in Augusta but never made it there and hadn't returned home. According to the Department of Public Safety, he has since been found though, although there are no details on where he was located. Well, the Fire department has recovered a vehicle that took a dip in the Moosum River this week. Fire crews say the SUV rolled into the river on Wednesday. Fortunately, no one was in the vehicle and no one was hurt. The current swept the vehicle several hundred feet down the river before it was recovered. Emergency crews called in a diver and a wrecker to help pull the vehicle from the water. 
The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reporting nine more people have come down with listeria since the outbreak from deli meats began. That brings the total number of infections nationwide to 43 people. Three of those have died from the illness. The New York State Food Laboratory identified listeria bacteria inside of some boar's head products. As a result, boar's head recalled all of its deli products on July 30th. The CDC urging customers to not eat recalled deli products and to clean any surfaces inside and outside the fridge that may have been in contact with any recalled cold cuts. Listeria can cause fever, confusion and fatigue and poses a higher risk of illness for pregnant women. The CDC urges people to call their state health department for any additional info about listeria where they live. Well, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development's Assistant Secretary visited the University of Maine's Advanced Structures and Composites Center yesterday. This comes as the university strives to be a national model for manufacturing affordable housing with their 3D printing home. 3D printed home. Our Grace Blanchard has more. The University of Maine's Advanced Structures and Composites Center is continuing to attract notice from the federal government over their efforts to produce manufactured homes. The center received a visit from the Assistant Secretary for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Dr. Kimberly McLean. So it's just really a great opportunity to see um, all the work that Maine is doing uh, to really address some of the housing shortages. The university unveiled the world's first bio-based 3D printed home back in 2022. Now they are looking to expand that with their latest pilot program that aims to build nine single family homes for low income families in the Bangor area. We're very excited. It's taking us into new territory because of course as a university we're very focused on the development and some of the more basic technology work and uh, this project will test out how well and how quickly we're able to bring these to scale. Dr. McLean says the department is looking for innovative opportunities to lower housing costs. She says manufactured housing is a central component of the Biden-Harris administration's strategy to increase housing supply. This technology really allows us to innovate, figure out what works well, how do we build it to scale, and how do we build it faster so that we can get housing on the streets for those who really need it. The university hopes to see this become a national model for manufacturing affordable housing. We look to see uh, a future where projects like this, this 3D printing effort that we're doing here at UMaine and this kind of 3D printed home that is so attractive and so beautiful in terms of imagining a future for it, uh, we do see ourselves as a model for leadership in that area. In Orno, Grace Blanchard, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The election may still be a few months away, but starting yesterday, you can request your absentee ballot. Maine Secretary of State and top election official Shanna Bellows says the process to request a ballot is as simple as visiting a website. We have an online absentee ballot request system, and it links back to the clerks so that your municipal clerk will see that request and be able to fulfill it when ballots will be available. Now keep in mind, voting does not start until 45 days prior to election day, our military and our overseas voters can start to vote. And then 30 days prior to election day, every Maine citizen uh, can in fact start voting absentee. Secretary Bellows adds that even though you're requesting a ballot now, they won't be sent out by the clerks until 30 days before the November 5th election. Well, Maine businesses will see the first round of funding to help them recover from last winter's storms. Governor Janet Mills announced yesterday that her administration has awarded $5.8 million in business recovery and resilience grants to more than 100 businesses and nonprofit organizations. The legislature approved the funding as part of the supplemental budget in May. Washington County-based Woodland Pulp and Paper is one of the recipients. Spokesperson Marty Richard says, quote, The funding is critical for us because we were ineligible for other types of storm-related relief. These funds will allow us to address repair needs and better prepared to withstand weather damage to minimize the impact to our business. Last month, the governor announced 68 working waterfronts were also being awarded more than $21 million to support their recovery and rebuilding efforts. All right, the time now is 8.09. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, our own Corey Bouchard and an exclusive interview with Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. 
as Republicans set up their battle station to prepare for the upcoming election. We'll hear what he had to say coming up, but first, another check of the weather forecast. A dreary, rainy day today. We can expect scattered thunderstorms with highs near 70 degrees. Tonight, showers and thunderstorms, lows dropping down to the upper 60s. Tomorrow, those storms will eventually wrap up later on in the morning. The highs tomorrow around 84. Central Maine Barns and Sheds, quality products built right here in Newport with a strong attention to detail. We have an incredible selection of pre-made options and would be more than happy to custom build a unit specifically for you. Central Maine Barns and Sheds has financing options available, including a rent-to-own program. We provide free delivery and setup within a 30-mile radius of any of our locations. Check out our full inventory at centralmainbarns.com or call for more information, 368-6177. Chevy lets you begin every day fully charged. So you can go farther. And so can your money. Tow with confidence. Plus, stay connected with available OnStar technology. For summer adventures, Chevy's got you. Get 5750 total value on this Silverado LT when you trade in an eligible vehicle. That's 10% below MSRP. Visit your main Chevy dealers. Back by popular demand, the Lucerne Inn in Dedham presents its amazing Sunday brunch. Join us every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. for a culinary experience like no other. Indulge in an exquisite selection of dishes, all while enjoying breathtaking views. Seating is limited, so reservations are recommended, but walk-ins are always welcome. The Lucerne Inn Sunday brunch, where great food meets a spectacular view. Call today to reserve your spot. Yo. These dudes are getting three grand a month. No strings attached. Oh, hell yeah. So what are they gonna do? Let's go! Learn to fly, buy a monkey. That's a dream pet right there. <gasps> build a super suit. Woo! You can't wait five seconds for the door to open. Save a child, catch a whale, hit the slopes. Hey, I oh, nailed it. Golf sucks, I'm done. Universal Basic Guys premieres September 8th on Fox. In July of last year, the town of Bar Harbor increased its parking fees and installed more parking kiosks throughout downtown, yielding millions of dollars in parking revenue. Our Doug Banks explains. Tourism season in Bar Harbor is in full swing. From what we heard, uh, May and June were a little bit slow over the start, um, but July seems to kind of have brought it back. In July of last year, the town of Bar Harbor increased its parking fees in certain areas by two and four dollars, as well as installing more parking kiosks throughout downtown. According to the town's 2025 fiscal year budget, that yielded more than $3 million in parking revenue. One town official tells us the bulk of the additional monies is appropriated for capital expenditures, such as roads and sidewalks. Additionally, $216,000 of the parking revenue will help fund the Island Explorer transportation system. Eaton says the variation in pricing across parking zones is intended to encourage visitors to park in different areas when they travel to a different part of town. It is one of the bigger questions that we do get at the chamber here is questions about parking, um, but but once people kind of get in town and figure out the kiosk system that was put in place this year, the Park Mobile app, and some of the other things, it seems to, seems to be working well for the town. Eric Anderson of Frederick, Maryland, says it took him 15 minutes to find a parking spot. It was a little challenging, but it's tis the season, you know, everybody's here visiting. You want to have enough room for everybody to park, but um, you want to maintain the the quality and the character of the town, so you have to kind of find a balance. In Bar Harbor, Doug Banks, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. On Wednesday, Republicans opened what they are calling their battle station to help centralize volunteers across Maine's 2nd Congressional District and to get Republicans elected up and down the ballot. Joining them at the grand opening was U.S. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke exclusively with Speaker Johnson about the upcoming election and what he sees as key issues leading up to November. Speaker Johnson, thank you so much for taking time sure. uh, to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. Glad to be with you. U.S. Speaker of the House Mike Johnson visited Maine to celebrate the grand opening of the National Republican Congressional Committee's battle station for Maine's 2nd Congressional District. 
Speaker Johnson spoke exclusively with ABC7 and Fox 22. He says all eyes across the country are focused on this race. We believe we can flip this seat back to Republican hands. We're so excited that uh, Austin Terrio has stepped up to run. He's got an extraordinary resume. He's a, a young, thoughtful leader. And I think he's really uh, caught fire here among the, among the base. We really do believe this is one of our key pickup opportunities in the whole country. According to Speaker Johnson, the 2024 election could be one for the history books. With control of the White House, Senate and House all up for grabs, there's a possibility that Republicans could gain control of all three and be able to implement their legislative priorities. And if all three of those things happen, we'll have unified government, which means we'll have a true opportunity to fix it all. We'll begin with the top priorities in the American people. We'll seal the border on day one. We'll get the economy going again and flourishing. We'll, we'll get our, our stature on the world stage restored so that we're not projecting weakness and in inviting our adversaries to be so aggressive. Speaker Johnson also spoke on what he sees as a federal government's role in preventing mass shootings like we saw last October in Lewiston. Mental health is a, is a big problem across the country. We've seen rising rates of not only violence, but suicide as well. And it, it must be something that uh, is adequately addressed. Um, look, the evil comes from the human heart, not from the weapon that's used. In European nations where they ban uh, weapons, uh, people still are killed by evil persons. They use other means. So I, I think it's something that, that um, the government at all levels, federal, state, and local, has to address. The mental health component of that is a really, really important thing. To watch the full interview with Speaker Johnson, you can visit our website, foxbangor.com. In Auburn, I'm Cora Bouchard for APC7 and Fox 22 News. All right, the time now is 816 after the break. After finding a 24 foot long shark washed up on the beach, scientists are working to learn more about what led to its death. We'll have the very latest coming up on Good Morning Maine. Meet Stacy at Shearhaven in Bangor. Whether you're looking for a total transformation, want to try the newest trend, or just need an expert opinion on hairstyle, Stacy is up for the task. For 15 years with a passion for custom cuts and colors, Stacy makes getting your hair done the perfect experience from start to finish. Chevy lets you begin every day fully charged. So you can go farther. And so can your money. Tow with confidence. Plus, stay connected with available OnStar technology. For summer adventures, Chevy's got you. Get 5750 total value on this Silverado LT when you trade in an eligible vehicle. That's 10% below MSRP. Visit your main Chevy dealers. We are explorers, hard workers, the jack of all trades. We are Mainers. Maine Quit Link provides free nicotine quit medication, including gum, patches, and lozenges. No insurance needed, no copay, and no cost to Mainers. Because quitting tobacco with a little extra help is more successful than quitting on your own. Quit like a Mainer. Enroll online at mainequitlink.com or call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Protect your vehicle from rusting away with Bell's Automotive Protection. We are the leader in mobile undercoating and rust proofing in Maine. We'll travel right to your driveway using the best and safest products on the market. This is much safer than rubberized coatings that can cause damage later on. We spray all types of vehicles, including commercial fleets. We all know vehicles aren't cheap anymore. Don't let the harsh winter chemicals eat them away. Call us or visit our page for a free quote. 207-659-3805. Meet Stacy at Shearhaven in Bangor. Whether you're looking for a total transformation, want to try the newest trend, or just need an expert opinion on hairstyle, Stacy is up for the task. For 15 years with a passion for custom cuts and colors, Stacy makes getting your hair done the perfect experience from start to finish. We're learning new details after a shark washed ashore in Blue Hill yesterday, or excuse me, two days ago. The 24-foot shark was discovered on the shore near a residence Wednesday morning. A College of the Atlantic representative confirms it is a basking shark. Some nearby residents say they saw the animal thrashing in the water the day before it died. And town officials say the shark's death comes as a shock. A resident called in and said that their shark or they found a shark washed up on their shore. We've seen it happen in other parts of the state and this is a first for us. So I think people are probably still uh, figuring out how they feel about it. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administra Administration, basking sharks primarily feed on plankton. 
Experts were on scene earlier yesterday morning to begin the process of performing a necropsy. At this time, it's not yet known how the shark became beached or if it's the same one spotted earlier this week in the waters off of Swans Island. According to a representative from the New England Aquarium, samples will be sent to NOAA to determine the cause of death. Be interesting to see what they find. There's a lot of speculation on what might have caused its death. I know, and it's yeah. only kind of increasing as the days go on. Yeah. All right, the time now is 8.20. Let's get a full look at that weather forecast. All right, thank you very much. Happy Friday. Here's what we got here. Some reductions in visibility, some areas of dense fog greeting us this morning. That's not the main concern. We are watching for rain that is also moving in. Before we get there, we also have a small craft advisory that is posted until 8 a.m. Sunday along the coast because of active surf that will be expected as Debbie starts to move in our direction. And of course, we'll be watching for some gusty winds too, and that advisory may also get expanded. Here's the latest radar. We are watching showers that are moving in this morning morning. Not much lightning, if any lightning just yet, but we will have more of that developing from the southwest to the north and east today as we get more of that peak daytime heating going. Here's the bigger picture here. Here's what's left of Debbie right here, kind of tracking for the south going toward the north with showers and thunderstorms developing for a good part of the northeastern U.S. And we'll keep this going on and off throughout the daytime period today. We will get some dry hours from time to time too. And of course, the bigger picture, the rest of the country though, still some scattered showers and storms in some spots, but for the, the, the most part, the big story right now is Dabby that is currently moving along the East Coast. So Futurecast moving forward, we have showers and storms moving through today. Some breaks during the afternoon period. More opportunities for showers and storms moving later on tonight in the parts of tomorrow morning. Locally heavy downpours cannot be ruled out even through parts of Saturday morning. We'll start to clear things up for the afternoon Saturday, but still a storm or two cannot be ruled out for the afternoon hours as well. But once we get towards parts of Saturday night, that's when things really begin to calm down. And Sunday looking a lot better. But meanwhile, as for the rainfall for today, at least maybe up to a half inch to three quarters of an inch of rain, depending on where you're at before we're all finished up for today. But really, though, as we head towards parts of Saturday, here's what we're watching out for a little bit more rain on the way. So before this all wraps up, another three quarters of an inch to maybe over an inch of rainfall possible before we're all finished up. Now, gusty winds will also be on the way for us today. Not so much today, but tonight for sure. Maybe a quick gust up to 10 to 15 miles per hour today. Tonight, gusts up to 30 miles per hour are possible and getting close to 40 40 mile per hour gusts as we head towards your Saturday. So make sure you're ready for that. Your forecast coming up for today. It will also be a little bit humid at times with highs in the low 70s, scattered showers and thunderstorms with that southeast wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, more showers and thunderstorms. Still a little humid out there with lows in the upper 60s and a south wind gusting up to around 30 miles per hour at times. Humid again for tomorrow. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Highs in the mid 80s and that south wind getting up to around 30 miles per hour at times. Let's check out your extended forecast. We have showers and thunderstorms today, tonight, and also in the parts of tomorrow. But notice what happens Sunday. We calm down. We'll be partly cloudy with highs in the upper 70s. More showers and thunderstorms possible Monday. Otherwise, partly cloudy with highs in the mid 70s and lower 80s for your Tuesday under a partly cloudy sky. Tell the insurance company you mean business. Call Joe. Joe Bornstein right now. Call the firm that has been getting justice for Mainers for 50 years. If you've been injured in an accident, call Joe. Whoa, is this your new Nissan Rogue? Yeah, crazy story. Yesterday, I was at the Nissan end of summer sales event taking a test drive, and Laura says, we've got somewhere to be. And off we went. We're having a blast. And she tells me it's recommended by Consumer Reports. These Rogues are going fast. I knew I had to have that Rogue. Get a low 279 per month lease on Rogue, or get up to 2,500 total savings on remaining select 2024 Rogue Platinum trims. Ah, taking the time to savor Thomas's crunchy yet soft bagels. Thanks, Tom. It's a uh, Tom, actually. Right, Tom. 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 Did you do that on purpose? Tom. Tom. How have we got to Tom? Huzzah! A toast to breakfast. Players have been winning with the main lottery for 50 years now. And over time, winning has looked a lot different. Out of sight. I won. No way. Totally won. <laughs> Here we are. I'm a winner. And now, with our new 50th anniversary tickets, you could win up to $100,000 in 2024. I won. This is lit. Celebrate 50 years of the main lottery. Get your tickets today. Hood is the cottage cheese cottage cheese lovers love. 
Why? Our country style has more protein than hummus and less sugar than yogurt. And our expertly blended flavors are a taste combination you can't recreate at home. Mmm, now that's cottage cheese. Hood Cottage Cheese. I was hurt in a bad motorcycle accident, and I was laid up for a couple months. If you've been injured in a motorcycle accident, call Joe today for a free case evaluation. I'm really grateful they won my case for me. Dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. Newly released body cam video sheds more light on the response to the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. Some can be heard criticizing the preparation for the event. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has more. New body cam video shows police rushing to find the man who fired shots that grazed former President Trump, killed one man and injured two others. It shows the moment a local police officer is boosted up to the roof and quickly retreats after seeing the shooter. This close, bro. Do he turn around on me? He's straight up. Several chaotic minutes play out before police reach the roof and find the dead body of 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks next to his rifle after he was shot by a counter sniper. In the aftermath, police can be heard complaining that no one was guarding the roof with a clear view of the stage. I told them they need to post the guys over here. I told them that the the Secret Service. I told them that Tuesday. I told them the post guys over here. That complaint appears to contradict what the interim Secret Service director told lawmakers on Capitol Hill last week that the roof was left to local police to secure. We didn't challenge our own assumptions of we assume that someone's going to cover that. We assume that there's going to be uniform presence. The former president addressed his injury at a press conference after nearly losing his life last month. I'm a fast healer. It's a hell of a shot, but I'm a fast healer. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much recovered. And we're expecting to see even more congressional hearings as investigations continue into how that shooting was allowed to happen. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris have reportedly agreed to debate each other on September 10th. The former president proposed two more debates while speaking to reporters Thursday afternoon. The Trump campaign is also blasting the vice president, saying she's avoiding the media. Fox News correspondent Caroline Shively reports. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump held public events Thursday afternoon. Harris held a campaign rally for members of the United Auto Workers in Michigan. That's what our campaign is about. We love our country. We believe in our country. We believe in each other. We believe in the collective. While Trump spoke to reporters at his private club in Florida. We have somebody that hasn't received one vote for president, and she's running, and that's fine with me. But we were given Joe Biden, and now we're given somebody else. Trump pointed out that Harris has yet to face the media since President Biden dropped out and left her as the Democratic nominee. I think that the press should be demanding interviews. Now that the Veep drama is over, where does she stand on uh, the expiring Trump tax cuts next year? Where does he stand on uh, China and Taiwan? We don't know. President Biden was trailing Trump nationally and in most swing state polls. But the race seems to be tightening in some states now that Harris is the nominee. On Thursday, the Cook Political Report moved the swing states of Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia from leans Republican to toss-up. This is going to be a very close election. Make no mistake about it. The Real Clear Politics average of polls shows Trump and Harris separated by only half a percentage point. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. Well, Austrian authorities release a picture of one of the suspects of an alleged terrorist attack of plot on Taylor Swift's concerts. Police arresting two people on Wednesday on suspicions that they were planning to attack the concerts as part of Swift's Eras tour in Vienna. The photo released was taken by the suspect himself for social media. Police say the suspects seem to be influenced by the Islamic State, with one of them uploading an oath of allegiance to the militia group. Documents linked to the terrorist organization and Al-Qaeda were found at one of their homes along with bomb-making material. Both suspects were allegedly planning on killing as many people outside of the concert stadium using knives or self-made bombs. 
Concert organizers say they're confident with their decision of canceling in precaution of keeping the most almost 100,000 people expected at the stadium out of harm's way. I know a lot of fans were probably pretty bummed out about that, but boy, better than having to deal with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Coming up on the second half of the newscast, our Devin Dagnall tells us about a great spot if you're looking for one last summer trip in this week's Destination Devon. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. At Toyota's national sales event, we've got a long lineup of vehicles for summer fun. Like Camry, RAV4, Highlander, BZ4X, Tundra, Corolla Hybrid, Tacoma, Sienna, Corolla Hatchback, Sequoia, Prius Prime, RAV4 Hybrid, Land Cruiser, GR Supra, Toyota Crown, Four. You could get $1,000 in financing cash toward a luxurious and spacious Highlander. Plus, get two years no-cost maintenance, all from the longest-lasting brand, Toyota. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. 25 words or less. I'll take Chan Chan Tay Tay, as we call him. <laughs> well, his close buddies call him that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Taking wordplay. Oyster. Ugh. You're so shellfish. <laughs> to the next level. Medicine serving. Dose. <laughs> Every weekday. Together with Corbin, you rocked it. You're going home with $10,000. <laughs> Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Friday, August 9th, 2024, and it is also National Book Lovers Day. Books are the purest form of escapism. They can't take you to, or excuse me, they can take you to any time, place, or culture. This is a day to put away those smartphones, maybe curl up on the couch and pull out a good book. It's a good way to learn about the world around us or simply to transport ourselves to a different place if only for a while. And if I could trade all my responsibilities for the day and right. go sit down on the couch and read a book, I absolutely would. This is the perfect day for it too. It's going to be raining all day. Maybe dig out that book you've been putting off reading and just enjoy yourself. Get yourself some little snacks. That's what I do. I'll get some snacks set up. I want and some snacks. Just I'm like, hungry. Yeah, yeah. Put away the smartphone. Mm -hmm. So, All right. Time for history. Moving on now. On this day in history, back in 1173, construction began on a bell tower in Italy that became internationally famous as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. In 1793, the Louvre opened up in Paris and later became the most visited museum in the world. In 1831, the very first steam locomotive began its first trip between Schenectady and Albany, New York. That's and how it, it's pronounced. Oh, what's that? I always struggle with S Schenectady. Schenectady. Yeah. You, gotta, you have to just say it. You have to spit it right out. I know. If that's a tough one. If you try to sound it out, it'd be tough. But. Schenectady. Schenectady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, in 1846, the Smithsonian Institution was founded in Washington, D.C. by the U.S. Congress. It began thanks to funding from English scientist James Smithson. I've been there a number of times, always discovering new things. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing I did at the Smithsonian one time. I went on a trip with a school, and I was, I was in the Smithsonian. Me being me, I went into kind of like a little closed section because yep. the, the group that went that way, and Craig just kind of wandered off. Yeah. And, and I turned the corner, and there in this display case was Abraham Lincoln's hat. Wow. And the tools they used for his autopsy right there. And it was just, I felt so cool because I was the only one seeing it. But right. Yeah, you're always seeing something new there at the Smithsonian. Yeah, no, that is on. So. I, I've been meaning to go there every year, yep. um, Washington, D.C. It's kind of stressful to plan a D.C. trip because there's so much so that much. you can yeah. see. So yeah. I'm like, this is not a weekend trip. Yeah, you um, could spend five days just doing the various Smithsonian museums right. and the Aerospace Museum and all right. that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, good stuff. What yeah. a blessing. Yeah. All right, well, in 1944, the U.S. Forest Service and Wartime Advertising Council created Smokey the Bear to raise awareness about the dangers of forest fires. In 1945, an atomic bomb was dropped on the Japanese city of Nagasaki. Japan surrendered to the Allies a few days later, effectively bringing an end to World War II. And in 1969, actress Sharon Tate and four others were murdered by followers of Charles Manson, the leader of a communal religious cult. And in 1974, Gerald Ford was sworn in as president following the resignation of Richard Nixon. In 1977, American serial killer David Berkowitz 
was arrested for murdering six people in New York City and plunging the city into a panic. The so-called Son of Sam killer confessed and was sentenced to prison. Kind of a lot of yeah. scary stuff on this day. Yeah. For birthdays, we'll turn it over to a bright note now. We have all actors and actresses today. Today's birthdays include actress and Portland, Maine native Anna Kendrick, who is 39 years old today. Actor Sam Elliott is 80 years old. And actor Dan Levy is 41 years old. I'd like to wish them all a very happy birthday. I love them all. They're all great actors and actresses. And yeah, me too. Yeah. Good Sam stuff. Elliott, too. I hate to see that he's 80 because I want him just to be around forever, I you know? know. So hopefully he's still got a bunch of years left in him. I know. So. Still has a great mustache. <laughs> he has Can't the take that away from best him. mustache in the world. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, moving right along now. Um, it's pouring out again. It seemed like yep. it took a break about an hour ago, and now it's back, at least here in Bangor. Yeah, that's the way it looks like it's going to be until at least around this time tomorrow. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Friday. We're waking up to a little bit of areas of dense fog this morning across the western parts of the state and some other spots as well. Of course, as we get the daytime rolling, we'll lose the fog and of course the concern will be some rain that will be developing today on top of some rumbles of thunder. There is also a small crowd advisory that is now posted until 8 a.m. Sunday for this small area here. We might see this expanded a little bit more as of course we watch for Debbie that will be moving in rather soon. And we're already seeing the rain moving in as a result of Debbie here tracking from the southwest to the north and east. Not much of any lightning with this just yet, but we will be watching for more lightning that will be on the way coming up later on today as you get more of that peak daytime heating. But here's the leftovers of or Debbie right here. Pretty much a tropical depression, if not a remnant low at this point as it tracks off towards the north, sending in a lot of moisture, some showers and storms, and we'll keep this going throughout the daytime period today, but we will also get some breaks from time to time. Here's Futurecast. We'll get some breaks going throughout the afternoon period, but more opportunities for showers and storms arrive overnight tonight in the parts of early Saturday morning with locally heavy downpours possible too. Now here's the wind roughly at around five to 10 miles per hour to start today, but tonight and also in the parts of tomorrow, the winds really become gusty. So make sure you're ready for that. Your forecast for today, some scattered showers and thunderstorms possible with highs in the low 70s and that southeast wind at around five to 10 miles per hour. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, watching out for showers and thunderstorms with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. You'll full five day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. Well, if you're looking to get one last trip in before the end of summer, there's a lovely little spot on the shore of Green Lake that Mainers have been staying at since the 1940s. Let's turn things over to Devin Dagnalt for this week's installment of Destination Devon. It's just it feels like home. Jenkins Beach is a hidden gem of Maine. Just off Route 1 in Dedham, it's been a destination for people near and far for generations. And so we have a lot of folks who have made this their part of their summer tradition. Always staying within the Jenkins family, the ownership of the beach has changed a few times and now lies in the hands of Julie Jenkins, who has been working with her husband to renovate and update the beach and its cabins for about two years. Julie now proudly states the cabins are three season cabins ready for campers to stay all year, excluding the winter months. Despite the changes that came over the years, patrons still gladly return year after year and new and old generations of Jenkins alike seem to agree why. Another reason people keep coming back is memories. People could remember from their childhood coming here, having the greatest time ever, and then no, the, then dumb future realize that and hope that their kids can have that same experience. I think that is actually a lot of what brings people back. Even though the beach itself won't be open to the public besides reservations until next year, Julie hopes it will again be a gathering place for communities near and far to make new memories. There is no central place on the lake at this point. As I said, there was, you know, there's this store, there was the store across the street. This was always sort of a hub, and now there isn't really a central place. There's no place to, to really get together, meet your neighbors, talk to them. In Dedham, Devin Dagnall, EBC7 and Fox 22 News. I spent a lot of summer days laying on that beach with a lot of people there before they eventually closed up. They are making some improvements, trying to put in public restrooms and that sort of thing. Last I read, they were hoping to reopen it to the general public so you could just go for the day next summer. In the meantime, 
if you got the money and the time, you can go rent a cabin for the weekend or right. something. It's a right. great place to go and just relax. Maybe read a book. Yeah. 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 Looks looks nice. Bathrooms are a necessity, so I don't, kind I don't of blame important. them. Yeah. yeah. All right, right after the break, Tyler Cruz will have the latest with sports. We'll also be hearing about the upcoming Maine Red Hot Dog Festival. Don't go away. Maine Paving is Eastern and Central Maine's go-to for all things paving. Maine Paving specializes in commercial and residential paving, grading, seal coating, and crack filling. And get this, refer someone that schedules a job and receive a $250 Visa gift card. Currently booking for this year. Fires, floods, burst pipes. Disasters happen, but the mess they leave behind doesn't have to last. For 40 years, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration has been there to help Mainers get back to the closest to normal as they can. When your property is at its worst, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is at their best. And they have been for four decades. Put your trust in the Bouchard team. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. When it comes to automotive and heavy equipment repair, trust the experts at CTI Service Center located in Old Town and Milford. CTI offers heavy duty part sales at our Old Town location as well as on the road service with our heavy duty mobile units. CTI also offers tire sales including mountain spin balance as well as Old Town's only heavy duty alignment system. CTI Service Center diagnoses issues swiftly and accurately. For reliable service and peace of mind, give us a call or visit us online at cticservicecenter.com. CTI Service Center, simply the best. People ask me all the time, are those commercials really true? Does Lowry & Associates really get all of those clients, all of those big settlements? Yes, we do. We really have gotten millions of dollars for Mainers hurt by commercial vehicles. And the insurance companies know when you call the twos, we're going to fight for you. And you know what else is true? I really am standing on top of this big truck. Hurt by a big truck? Call the twos. We win for you. Maine Paving is Eastern and Central Maine's go-to for all things paving. Maine Paving specializes in commercial or residential paving, grading, seal coating, and crack filling. And get this, refer someone that schedules a job and receive a $250 Visa gift card. Currently booking for this year. The baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. Listen to this place! All new Friday Night Smackdown, tonight at 8, 7 Central on Fox. It has been a long and eventful offseason for the New England Patriots, but football is finally back at Gillette Stadium. Welcome back in, everyone. The Patriots kicking off the 2024 preseason schedule against the Carolina Panthers on Thursday night. It is a new era of Patriots football. Drake May, the rookie quarterback. Gerard Mayo, the rookie head coach. First offensive play for the Patriots, and it's a good one. Jacoby Brissett handoff to Ramondre Stevenson. He breaks it off for a big gain and a first down. The drive would stall, though, and then it would be Drake May time. Third and 12 is his first pass attempt. Dumps off a screen to newcomer Antonio Gibson, and he scampers for the first down. Only one drive for May. Two completions on three attempts. Next quarter, Bailey Zappi hits Kayshawn Booty for a deep gain on third down. That puts the Patriots into the red zone, and that sets up this. Running back Kevin Harris gets in for the first score of the game. Pats would add another touchdown to this one in the fourth quarter from Bazooka. Joe Milton, he finds Jaquay Jackson for a 36-yard score. That would seal it. The Patriots, they go on to win 17-3. And as far as the offense on a limited amount of plays, it was it was mainly about communication and and obviously getting plays from AVP, getting into the huddle, get to the line of scrimmage, snap, get the ball, and but uh, so yeah, I thought that went well. Thought it went well as well. To some baseball now, the Portland Little League All-Star team's magical postseason run, unfortunately, coming to an end on Thursday down at the New England Regionals. Portland facing Salem, New Hampshire, with a trip to Williamsport on the line. Portland starter David King with a strong start. Gets the beautiful punch out here in the first, a backwards K. Top three we go now. Salem with a runner at third. The bunt gets fielded cleanly by King. He got the out at first, but Zach Bolduc takes off for home. He scores the game's first run, one to nothing, New Hampshire. Still in the third now, New Hampshire looking to keep the inning alive. The base hit to center. Kevin McDonough is going to try for third. Look at Joe. 
Joey Salvaggio's missile of a throw gets him just in time to end the threat. Send him back to the dugout. Great tag at third two. All right, moving on. More great defense from Portland. This is Joey Salvaggio again with an unbelievable catch in center. That saved a run at least, maybe more. Bottom of the six now. Main down 2 nothing. Colton Johnson, he gets the final out, pitching a complete game shutout, leading Salem to a 2 to nothing win and a trip to the Little League World Series in Williamsport. All right, let's stay with the baseball diamond now. On Friday, the Junior Legion Northeast Regional Championship will begin right here in Bangor. Maine will have two representatives in the tournament, the state runners-up from Old Town Orno and the recently crowned state champs, the Trenton Acadians. OTO plays at 10 a.m. with Trenton's first pitch at 1 p.m., barring any weather. This is the Acadians' first trip to the regional at the Junior Legion level, and this team is excited for the challenge that it brings. I think it's fun playing teams you've never seen before. I think not making mistakes will be the biggest part and to try to make the other team make mistakes. It benefits us that we haven't seen these guys before. So we, we encountered a couple teams this year that it just became a, a mental game. You know, we, they may have beat us once or twice um, and we kind of sunk back into that and let it affect us. But um, going into this game, not knowing anybody, it's just we can go out there and play ball. Junior Legion is four players, 17 and under. However, this Trenton team didn't have to worry much about the age limit. They have several players who haven't even stepped foot in a high school yet, play big roles in the road to the championship. They're looking to build on that momentum moving forward. It felt really good being able to be so young and then playing on such a high level team. It felt really nice and good experience for me. It's just cool to do that. We have, a, yeah, like you said, we have a ton of young players, including me. And it's just really fun to do that. It's been fun playing with older kids. I like it a lot. Like a lot of my friends play on this team. I've known them for so long now, just about all my life. This was the group that I was really, really excited for. Was because we're going to have such a core young group of players that we're going to be able to take for a couple years. All right, staying on the diamond now, the Red Sox off on Thursday, heading back to Boston after a pretty successful road trip. The Sox have won five of their last seven games since the trade deadline on July 30th. They have the best offense in the league since the deadline as well. They recently took two of three from the Royals, helping them in the battle for the third wild card spot. And after the game on Wednesday, Alex Cora was asked what he learned about the team on the road trip, and it was all about the bats. That we can hit. You know, uh, we hit the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, we were <clears throat> probably one pitch away from getting him out. Uh, we played we play well. You win two series on the road, now you go home, and we got to take care of business. That they do. That is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. This summer is the perfect time to get away with a great deal on your favorite Hyundai models. All backed by America's best warranty. Plus three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Add more joy to your journey. Hurry into the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. But act fast. The hottest deals of the summer won't last. Get in and get away now. Lease a well-equipped all-wheel drive Palisade SEL for only $3.59 a month. Or step up and get a limited with a 1,000 bonus cash. Hurry in. Are your basement walls bowing, crumbling, or failing? Hi, I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems. All things basement -y. Our stable lock wall system offers a patented, affordable, and permanent solution to save your foundation walls. It stabilizes, fills voids, and structurally repairs, leaving a new smooth surface. All the strength of new walls. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basement -y. These days you can buy a new mattress anywhere. However, getting the right mattress at the right price will keep you up at night. When you're ready for a new mattress, come to Dorsey's. We've delivered more mattresses to this area than any other retailer. With over 48 years of experience, the largest in-stock selection, plus our 30-night sleep guarantee, we've got the right mattress for you at a great price. Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A, Holden. Sleep well, my friends. Protect your vehicle from rusting away with Bell's Automotive Protection. We are the leader in mobile undercoating and rust proofing in Maine. We'll travel right to your driveway using the best and safest products on the market. This is much safer than rubberized coatings that can cause damage later on. We spray all types of vehicles, including commercial fleets. We all know vehicles aren't cheap anymore. Don't let the harsh winter chemicals eat them away. Call us or visit our page for a free quote. 
Welcome back, everyone. Well, despite the rainfall, a very fun event is going to go on tomorrow in Dexter. Rain or shine. Fortunately, it looks like the weather is going to clear up, so it's going to work out just fine. And we, of course, are talking about the upcoming Maine Red Hot Dog Festival. Joining us today is Trampus King. You might know him as the town manager of Dexter, but today you're helping to organize the, the festival. Thanks for coming in this morning. Yes, thank you for having me. Yeah. So this is a great idea. They came up with this several years ago as a way to celebrate this iconic Red Hot Dog in Maine, also maybe to give Dexter a little exposure too. What's, yes. the, what's the feeling in Dexter? Oh, it's a fun, everybody just excited to be there and just to have it going on and stuff. And we bring in a lot of extra people from out of town and uh, it's, just, it's just a fun atmosphere with great music and just a lot of fun for the kids. What can people expect? A, a lot of hot dogs. How, lot, many, how many do you expect to dogs. serve up tomorrow? Well, we got 5,000 on order, so we'll probably go through most of those. Um, we also have great bands there and stuff. We got like seven bands that come mm -hmm. in. We have a hot dog eating contest, uh, and we have a kid's cupcake eating contest too. So Awesome. What, what are the, they've done that in the past. Do you know what the previous records were for any of those? Well, we do, we, we can't do like chestnut and those things. So right. it's, it's not like that. So what we do is we give them 10 or 12 hot dogs. We give them 10 minutes to eat it. And whoever gets it done first uh, wins, wins a trophy. So. All right. Yeah. And then you have bragging rights for the yeah, next, you get bragging next rights. year or so. <laughs> yeah. All right. What time does this all start? I know it, it, it's supposed to start tomorrow morning, but with the rain, it might we still, we still plan on starting, opening the uh, street up at uh, 10 o'clock, and we go till 5 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And what else can people expect around there? I mean, other than hot dogs, there's other things to eat if you don't particularly yes, like hot dogs. We have, we have like eight other vendors that are coming in, and uh, they have their own food. We, we just don't let them sell the red hot dogs, so that's, that's our thing. So um, we also have a kid's zone so the kids can come in and play. But mm -hmm. it's, it's a music festival, too, because we, we have a lot of bands in um, from everything, from uh, um, community bands all the way up to... Mm -hmm. Um, 70s, 80s music and in, into the 90s. So. And this will go right into the evening? It so. goes right till 5 o'clock. 5 so. o'clock, yes. okay. And, then we, and we open the street back up. Okay, so it should be a good time. What do, what do you like about it personally? Me, I like it. I just seen all the people and just mm -hmm. seeing the, their faces and how much fun they're having and stuff. Um, again, we got 120 vendors, so it's people just getting around seeing things. We got amazing people around, mm -hmm. and, and it's just it's a great opportunity to see see things that you don't usually see so yeah and Dexter's a wonderful small community the yes. people are tight there and maybe you'll see some people you know it's kind of like a nice summer celebration where everybody comes out and you say hey I haven't seen you in a while exactly yeah. so you know reunions are happening at that time too so it's great to just to see everybody around and even better you get to eat some nice red hot dogs yes. so and you got to do a bun run in the morning I've never heard of yes. that got to do a bun run yeah we do a bun run so. at 7 30 um, we usually get around 50 to 60 people that do it and stuff it's a lot of fun it's a 5k um, mm -hmm. we have it Timed. It's it's uh, it's just it's a great and great opportunity to get out and even walk it. All right, I'm sure there's a place people can turn if they want more information. Is there a Facebook page or something yep, like that? Yeah, we do have a uh, um, uh, Main Red Hot Dog. Dog Festival Facebook page you can go to, um, and you can just catch up with it that. All right. Well, Trampus, thank you for coming yes, in this morning. I hope you have me. a great time, and we're praying that the, the weather clears up for you nice and early. Yep. So Hot dog gods are going to be there for us. One way or another, it goes <laughs> on. It'll be great. So, thanks for coming in. Yes, thank you. All right, we're going to send it back over to Devin for another look at that forecast. All right, thank you very much. Happy Friday. Here's what we got here. Some reductions in visibility, some areas of dense fog greeting us this morning. That's not the main concern. We are watching for rain that is also moving in. Before we get there, we also have a small craft advisory that is posted until 8 a.m. Sunday along the coast because of active surf that will be expected as Debbie starts to move in our direction. And of course, we'll be watching for some gusty winds too, and that advisory may also get expanded. Here's the latest radar. We are watching showers that are moving in this morning morning. Not much lightning, if any lightning just yet, but we will have more of that developing from the southwest to the north and east today as we get more of that peak daytime heating going. Here's the bigger picture here. Here's what's left of Debbie right here, kind of tracking for the south going toward the north with showers and thunderstorms developing for a good part of the northeastern U.S. And we'll keep this going on and off throughout the daytime period today. We will get some dry hours from time to time too. And of course, the bigger picture, the rest of the country though, still some scattered showers and storms in some spots, but for the, the most part, the big story right now 
now is debris that is currently moving along the east coast. So future cast moving forward. We have showers and storms moving through today. Some breaks during the afternoon period. More opportunities for showers and storms move in later on tonight in the parts of tomorrow morning. Locally heavy downpours cannot be ruled out even through parts of Saturday morning. We'll start to clear things up for the afternoon Saturday, but still a storm or two cannot be ruled out for the afternoon hours as well. But once we get towards parts of Saturday night, that's when things really begin to calm down and Sunday looking a lot better. But meanwhile, as for the rainfall for today, at least maybe up to a half inch to three quarters of an inch of rain, depending on where you're at before we're all finished up for today. But really, though, as we head towards parts of Saturday, here's what we're watching out for a little bit more rain on the way. So before this all wraps up, another three quarters of an inch to maybe over an inch of rainfall possible before we're all finished up. Now, gusty winds will also be on the way for us today. Not so much today, but tonight for sure. Maybe a quick gust up to 10 to 15 miles per hour today. Tonight, gusts up to 30 miles per hour are possible and getting close to 40 mile per hour gusts as we head towards your Saturday. So make sure you're ready for that. Your forecast coming up for today. It will also be a little bit humid at times with highs in the low 70s, scattered showers and thunderstorms with a southeast wind getting up to around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, more showers and thunderstorms. Still a little humid out there with lows in the upper 60s and a south wind gusting up to around 30 miles per hour at times. Humid again for tomorrow. Some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Highs in the mid 80s and at south wind getting up to around 30 miles per hour at times. Let's check out your extended forecast. We have showers and thunderstorms today, tonight and also in the parts of tomorrow. But notice what happens Sunday. We calm down. We'll be partly cloudy with highs in the upper 70s. More showers and thunderstorms possible Monday. Otherwise partly cloudy with highs in the mid 70s and lower 80s for your Tuesday under a partly cloudy sky. Transform your home with Ashley Furniture's factory authorized sale at the Furniture Gallery. A queen mattress and frame, a six piece dining set, a sofa chaise, a reclining sofa, a set of two recliners, or a complete bedroom set for just $5.95. Six amazing options for under $600. The Furniture Gallery's factory authorized sale ends soon, so don't miss out on these incredible deals. Hurry in to the Furniture Gallery, shop online, and visit our Facebook page for more savings. The Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Windham. Are you experiencing foot pain? Comfort Shoes and More has a team of experts trained in pet orthics to help you find relief. They offer tailored fittings, shoe modifications, customized orthotics, and much more for the ordinary or for the hard to fit foot with fashionable and functional footwear from today's top brands, Hoka, Brooks, Keen, Teva, Taos, Ufus, and Birkenstocks. From running to walking, casual or dress, they have it all. Take the drive to Newport for a sit and fit to find your perfect fit. You and your feet will be glad you did. AMHG Works LLC, American Made Home Goods, located at the Rennie's Plaza in Bangor. Come check us out. We're open seven days a week featuring artisans, crafters, and manufacturers from across the United States, where everything is meticulously designed with care and pride. We also have a wide selection of pet accessories and treats. Let us be your new favorite store. We look forward to seeing you. My husband was in a very serious accident and needed back surgery. We called the twos, and Lowry and Associates got him $450,000. Call us. We win for you. Call two, 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 22, 22. Oh, another morning to savor the crunchy nooks and crannies splendor of a Thomas's English muffin. Tom, which is a nook and which is a cranny? That's a nook, cranny, 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 nook, cranny. I mean, they should be teaching you this in school. Huzzah! A toast to breakfast. Popular comedian returns to the mic, and a famous father-son duo are in talks to host a major awards ceremony. Fox's Ashley Dvorkin has those stories and more in the Hollywood Nation. You guys are the best. I love you. Love for the Sandman, Sheeran gets festive, and the Levies look to MC in the Hollywood Nation. Eugene and Dan Levy may take center stage at the upcoming Primetime Emmy Awards. According to Deadline, the actors are in talks to host the ceremony September 15th. They made history during the 2020 award show as the first father-son duo to win an Emmy the same year. Sam Smith collaborates with Alicia Keys to reimagine Smith's hit, I'm Not the Only One. The official music video for their duet version is now available and follows the duo performing the song live for the first time during a recording session at Keys Jungle City Studios in New York City. 
The track is featured on the 10th anniversary edition of Smith's debut album, In the Lonely Hour. Ed Sheeran lends his vocal talents to Netflix's upcoming holiday film, That Christmas. The Grammy-winning singer wrote and recorded Under the Tree, an original song featured in the upcoming CG animated comedy. Based on Richard Curtis's trilogy of children's books, the movie follows entwined stories about family and friends leading up to Christmas Day. It debuts December 6th. Yeah, right. so anyways, I talk a lot. Speaking of Netflix, the streamer dropped a first look at Adam Sandler, Love You. The comedy special marks Sandler's first return to stand-up since 2018's 100% Fresh. It starts streaming August 27th. In Hollywood, Ashley Devorkin, Fox News. That should be funny. I like it. Sandler a lot. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like we're running out of time for today. It is Friday, thank goodness. So we'll be back on Monday at 6 a.m. on ABC7 and Fox 22. In the meantime, though, if you missed anything, you can head to foxbangor.com. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Five words or less. You might recognize him from Superstore and American Auto. Certainly don't beat yourself up if you don't. It's John Baronholtz. And joining John are dating couple Ashley and